Hey guys, it's Brandon Boswell. I want to take a quick minute to show you how we recently at Copycat converted one of our Flash animations into a printed flipbook. And um, the artist who originally created this um, actually lost the FLA file. So all we have left is this Swift file that runs on our website. So what I tried to figure out how to do was how do we get this Swift file um, back into Photoshop so that we can create this flipbook. So I tried a few different things and then I realized that we could take a screen capture with something like QuickTime um, and basically take that back into Photoshop. So from that I created this MOV file and Photoshop CS6 will accept MOV files just fine. So let's go ahead and fire up Photoshop CS6. Um, if you open it up and you don't have this new timeline panel here at the bottom, you can get to that from the window menu and then just choose timeline and it'll show up. So we can actually bring that video into Photoshop by choosing this little film strip right here and choosing Add Media. Let me just find it on our hard drive. Let's grab that. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a new video group layer over here and a new layer over here on the timeline. So the next step for us now is to go ahead and set the in and out point for the video. So I don't need all this stuff here in the beginning. I want to go ahead and scrub to once the cat's animated in, which is about right there. So we can take the scissors and basically cut it into two pieces and then we can just throw away that first piece that we don't want. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing at the end, which is going to be right about right there. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to grab the scissors and then we're going to take the last piece and we're going to go ahead and throw that away. And notice how the work area changes. This little icon shows you where your work area is and that automatically adjusts for you, which is really nice. So the next step that we want to do is we probably want to change the frame rate for this because when we recorded in QuickTime it was at 60 frames per second and it was about 12 seconds long so you know that's a lot of sheets of paper to print for a flipbook. So the easiest way to do that is to come over here to this panel menu and we can choose set timeline frame rate and what that's going to do is it's going to keep the, the length of the video in seconds the same, it's just going to reduce the number of frames in each second. So I found that for a general flipbook, um, 10 frames works pretty good. In this case, we're going to end up with about 100 pages. Um, it's a good balance between thickness, cost, and overall quality of the animation. So now that we've done that, we, we can kind of scrub through here and see what we've got. I think it looks pretty good. You can also press the space bar to get a RAM preview of what it's going to look like. And I think it looks pretty good, actually. Though, the one last thing we want to do before we export is we want to go ahead and crop this. So, we're going to crop this for a standard flipbook, which is 3.5 inches by 2.5 inches. And I've already got that set up here in the crop. Uh, one of the other cool things about Photoshop CS6 is there's now a non destructive crop tool. Um, so basically what that means is when we go to crop things, we're not actually throwing away the pixels. Um, we can get those back if we need to um, later. So let's go ahead and we'll set that up. And I'm just going to hold the Alt key and the Shift key. And I'm going to scale inward from the, to the center. And I'm going to just move this around until I get things the way I want them. And let's just scale that in just a little bit more. Now, one gripe I do have with Photoshop CS6 is when using the crop tool along with video, you can't actually scrub through your timeline, um, which is a little difficult because the way you want to crop it might be different depending on the frames, and it's kind of hard to preview that. But because it's non-destructive, it's not that huge a deal. If we want to go back in and change it, we can do so. So let's just accept that change by changing the tool, and we're going to crop. And... Is talking about. Let's just say okay. Okay, I think life is good. I think we're all right. So we just animate through here. And I think it looks pretty good. There's one little spot that bothers me. I noticed that the van here on the top is um, kind of cut off. So let's just go back into the crop tool real quick. Fix that. Shouldn't be a big deal. And we'll just kind of scrub that down. I think that's okay. Okay. So let's accept that. Yep. Oh, great. Okay. Good. 
Excellent. Excellent. I think that looks really good. All right, so let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to convert this back to JPEGs. So we're going to go to File, we're going to go to Export, Render Video. Now, if we were going to do a standard video render here in Photoshop, we would leave this on Adobe Media Encoder. But in this case, since we want to do still frames, we're going to choose Photoshop the Image Sequence. So let's go ahead and choose a folder for this to go in. So let's go to the desktop and let's create a new folder. And let's call that Image Sequence. And we'll choose that folder. We'll give it a name. We'll call it Flipbook. And I'll just go ahead and set some quality settings. Oh, great. It is good for print. And everything else looks good. The work area is set. The work area and the whole, the whole thing are the same number of frames, so it doesn't really matter in this case. So we're going to go ahead and render that out. That might take a moment, um, but it's going to give us a progress bar here on screen. And if we open up the Finder, if you like to watch it as it goes, you can go in and actually see it populating with these frames. Just cool. So, shouldn't take too long. It's not too big. All right, so our image sequence is done. We're going to go ahead and hide Photoshop. And let's see, how many frames do we have? We have 111 frames. Great, that was about what we were expecting. So, from here, you've done the hard part, but the problem is if you wanted to actually go ahead and print this to a printer, you're left with 111 separate files, and getting them over there and getting them printed is, is not exactly going to be easy. So what I would do if I was going to print this, I would go ahead and open up something like Acrobat, and we are going to create a PDF, and we're going to merge files into a single PDF. And so from here, we can add files from multiple different locations. In our case, they're all in one folder. So we can just choose Add Folders. Find that folder on the desktop. And let's go to Image Sequence. Yep, choose. Great. File size. And let's do high, just in case. And what it's going to basically do is it's going to go through each one of these files, and it's going to merge them into one single PDF that we can basically print to our printer um, easily, which will be really nice. And when you want a book, you just print one book and they're ready to go. So, and it's going through. It's going to take just a second again. And basically, once this is done, we're going to end up with a single file that we can print to. Now, depending on the order that your printer prints in, um, you might need to choose reverse order, um, but that's probably something that's e most easily done in the print driver. Um, most printers have a print normal or print reverse, and that should handle that for you. That way, once it's done, if you need to cut it, all you have to do is cut it and bind it, and you're finished with the flipbook. So, just wait for this real quick. Okay, and we're done. It's just going to ask me for a name, and we'll call this Flipbook. And now I can basically scrub through this PDF, and I can see exactly how it's going to print, which is perfect. And now I can just choose File Print, and depending on my printer would determine specifically how I'd want to set this up, but it should be just as easy as hitting print. Um, and obviously, if you're going to do multiple of these, you would do some sort of imposition to set it up. But that's the basic premise, and um, we should be done. Um, this is just how I did it. There's probably a lot easier way. There's maybe even software specifically for this purpose. Um, but this seemed to work for me in a pinch. So if you know any better ways, I'd love to hear what you come up with. Um, leave me a, com a comment um, underneath the video, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.